This bomb will go off in 10 seconds. You're listening to the Pipe Bomb Podcast with James, Nick, Gigi, Josh, Sam, and Tom. Ring the bell. One. Come to see me the Pipe Bomb Podcast. And now, the Howard Podcast. Hello guys and welcome to yet another edition of the Pipe Bomb Podcast. Now you're probably wondering whose voice this actually is. That's because you've not heard me for a long time. That's right, it's me, Tom, and today I am with one other person. Well actually no, one and a half person, if that makes sense. So come on out, James. Hey guys, it's me. I'm here, but I'm not alone. I brought my nephew with me. Say hi, Javon. Hi. Say hi to all the wrestling fans. Hello. You know what's crazy? That my nephews are not into wrestling. Isn't that absurd? Um, You will be after this show, don't worry. <laughs> no, they know like John Cena, Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, like the big guys. But Roman if... Reigns. Oh, you know Roman Reigns. Your dad watches wrestling. Yeah, I watch it with him sometimes. But you don't pay attention. I do. <laughs> Who's the champion right now? Who's the heavyweight champion? See, I asked him this last time. He could not answer that question. Oh, come on. You know it. Come on. Think about it. Who's the heavyweight champion? Triple H. You didn't. You wouldn't know that. See, he doesn't know. <laughs> oh, bless. Well, you do now, mate. Don't worry. You do now. That's yeah. fine. But he's here uh, with me for the week. I'm playing daddy daycare. Oh, and you're going to get paid. No? No. I, oh. I get paid in love. They love me, so I'm good. Oh, I'd do it for the money, but okay. <laughs> that's what makes you you. That's, that's what, what <laughs> Well, PG. <clears throat> <laughs> so, on, the, on this week's or slash today's show, we have got quite a few topics. But first, before, let me just say that thank you very much to all the listeners for subscribing. Thank you for all the Twitter followers. We're gaining every single week, which is a bonus. Yeah. But we have got an, an Hanaya interview that we have just done. I forgot which two of you did it. Which two of you did it? Me and Sam did it last week, and it was so much fun. I want to thank everybody for showing their support and retweeting and favoriting the interview and really getting it popping. It's one of our biggest splashes of the interviews that we've done, because we've done a few now, and this is our biggest splash. You know what? I would like to say that I've actually listened to it, but I actually haven't yet. So I must, check, I must I know. I must check that out myself. I can't so, with him. <laughs> I know. I'm like Time of the Dinosaurs, like a long time ago. It's a good oh. interview because she, she threw in a little bit of shade. She talked about how some of the women that she works with in the wrestling business are not as nice, nice as people like to pass them off as. So it's very interesting, very revealing. So I suggest you guys go listen to it. And she's so super sweet and talented. And she just had a match with Blue Pants um, this past yeah. weekend. And we also talked about it. So it's a good interview. So I suggest oh, wow. you guys go listen to it. Okay, and also, coming up very soon is a fantasy book in series two, yeah. season two, whichever one you want to call it, depends where you live in the world. Um, if you want to check out season one, there have been five episodes that myself and a couple of the other Pipe Bomb members have talked about before. But in season two, it's going to be very interesting, so keep an eye out for that. Well, but- Tommy, we last week we talked about our fantasy bookings. We gave the listeners a preview on who we're doing. So if you want, you can tell the listeners who you're working on. Okay, like I need to try and go back in my memory now because I completely forgot. Oh, yeah, I know. So my person that I'm going to be doing on is bringing Gail Kim back and how I would bring her back into the division. You know, she's been... Gail Kim's been, like, in WWE, what, like, 7,000 times now. So... This should be quite easy, but I've actually penciled down some ideas already, and I think it's going to be quite an interesting one. Who did you have again? I'm doing a Kelly Kelly comeback as a heel, and I I want to give the uh, the listeners a little insight of that. This time around, the new series, it's going to be very edited heavily. Like, there's going to be music, there's going to be effects it's gonna be fun it's gonna be different so wow pop in 24 7 yeah, great so they might take a little longer because there's gonna be a lot of editing going into them but i just want them to be perfect i really want fantasy booking to be like a huge thing for us so i'm gonna put in a lot of work for it okay and the final but big reveal that won't be revealed just yet tpp has landed 
question mark, question mark, potentially another big interview yes. with not a wrestler. And that's where I'm going to leave it as. And this is big. This is probably going to be our biggest one yet. So It's an insider. So just stick out for it. I would say around Mania season, guys. So get ready for that. And it's going to be huge. And in good old-fashioned form, we will be dropping a trailer when we announce it. I'm not going to tell you guys when. We're going to do a Beyonce. Just drop it. <laughs> oh, God, no, because we're more classy than that. So, you know. Well, I, you, you, yeah. well I'm not a Beyonce crazy fan, but she's not, like, ratchet. I think she's a very classy lady, but... Oh, sometimes you just don't have to say anything. You can just look at the face and think, hmm, okay. Oh, you're not a Beyonce fan either? I'm not either. I'm not going to say it. No. Time. I mean, she's a good singer, but just apart from that, there's nothing really, like, She's boom, bland. Uh, she's just a woman that's talented. Anyways, enough Beyonce talk. Anyway, um, well, clearly Sasha Banks is the Beyonce of Team Bad. Damn but right. anyway, we, the, the first topic that we want to talk about, it's just like a brief thing. It's not actually an in-depth thing. It's earlier today, Dana Brooke... Mm-hmm. has officially been cleared to wrestle again and she's been performing in the NXT performance center today. Now James, I know you love this girl a lot so go ahead. I I just want to say I'm so excited that she's going to be back on track. She's been sidelined for a couple of months now. I've been missing Dana Brooks, but this girl has been doing everything on ringside. She's been so entertaining coming out for Emma's matches. So I can't wait to see who she's going to get involved with coming back. Hopefully it's the, hopefully it's she gets involved with Peyton Royce or maybe Billy Kay. I want to see something happen for those two. Because now that we have Asuka, she's basically heading up to Bailey now. But I just can't wait to see what they got for Dana Brooks. And I'm excited to see her come back. Do you know what I will say though? I've, 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 I have actually missed listening to her theme because like her theme is like one of my favorite NXT ones. Yeah. So hearing that like beat drop at the beginning and then the singing, it's just brilliant. But yeah. you know, I'm looking forward to her coming back. It's coming from this is coming from someone who wasn't a fan before, but because like we've seen the, the same NXT matches with the women here, pretty much here and now and then. So with Dana coming back into the fold, something could change. So looking forward to that. But that's the whole Dana Brooks thing. But now, this is where I want to talk about. Well, actually, no, not really, because it's ratchet as hell. Uh, PG. But Women of Honor. Now, I'm, I don't really watch it that much. I only watch the old the matches and whatnot. But this past week, it was Amber Gallo's Bullet Babe versus Vader Scott. Now, for me, it was sloppy. You know what? Honestly, that's all I'm going to say. James... Which match is this? Bullet Babe? I think it was Bullet Babe versus Vader last week. It was sloppy. And they even edited out the ending, which you could clearly see was cut. Yeah, we talked about this match last week. I thought um, this... I haven't, I haven't, see, I haven't listened to any of the show oh, for a while. Well, so. the last match was Kelly Klein and that girl with the tail. <laughs> oh, the squirrel. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, that was God. a mess. Mm. That was a mm. mess. I couldn't... Okay. Yeah, you see, I'm like two weeks behind. So, yeah, I haven't watched this match, and it was sloppy. Like, Kelly Klein, she's being billed as this, like, big muscle girl. But, like, you t- she's been wrestling for, what, three years now? Because three years ago, she was in OVW as someone called El- Mary Elizabeth Munro. And she was green as anything. But, you know, she's been given something different to do. So, hopefully, she she becomes better. But as for uh, Solo Darling, she's been in the wrestling business for, like... God knows how many years now. But then both of them together just didn't mesh well. And with Women of Honor, they need to put women together that can actually work because there's not one match yet that I've looked and thought there was not one sloppy moment at all. Oh, like, wow. there's not... Apart from, actually, no, I think it was the tag match that involved Hanaya. That was a good match. You didn't watch the Fatal 4-Way? That was a good match, too. I watched it, but there was, like, some sloppy parts here and oh, there. Oh, I don't like that, was, that shit. There, there was, like, mis- miscommunications here and there. Yeah, because, you know, Vader Scott's... Part, but the, here's the thing with Cal, that she, she, sorry, she's considered a veteran, yet she's still being oh, very sloppy. She's like the velvet sky of women of honor. But um, oh, I was gonna insert a, a very word that bit with PJ say, say, <laughs> um, Kelly Klein. When it comes to her, Kelly Klein, I'll just talk about them individually. She has a great look, she has a great build. They're, the way that they're building this girl, I like it. That, I will say. I do like how they're building her very dominant. She's coming off as the Ronda Rousey of wrestling. I can see that's what they're trying to mold her around because she comes in with the mouth carter and all of that. But the women that she's been facing has been 
jokes. It's just basically like squash matches. But if it's going to be a squash match, let it be a squash match. Don't give this squirrel girl an offense at all. <laughs> it was a waste of time. And then she goes to the corner and grabs the juice. Like, I was over it. But like you said, they need to put women that can work together. I want to see more matches with Hanaya. I want to see more matches with Mandy. I want to see more matches with um, Hendrix and Kelly Klein. I want to see her get in the mix with that. And I also want to see uh, more matches with... Um, Oh my God! What's her name? Her name just slipped my slipped my mind. Um, hey. Uh. Fuck. She's the one with blue hair. With blue hair. Can no. I was gonna say Candice LeRae, but it's not. No. Scarlet. No. Scar. I like Scarlet, but she's she's not a that great. She's the one. No. She's the cha- she's a champion. She's really really good in the ring. Um, oh my God. The champion of what? Is it Cherry? No, it's not Cherry Bomb. No. I don't know. I forgot her name. I know one of the listeners out there. You guys will get me. They always got someone, me. someone with blue hair. You guys know her. She was in the Fatal Four Way match. She was in the Fatal Four Way match with um. Oh, Kimberly. Kimberly, yes, I like her. She's a very good stiff worker. Mm. She works very well in the ring. I want to see her more involved. And I know they want to showcase other women, but some of these women just don't got it. Like Veda Scott and the the freaking tail girl. Like they oh. just gotta go. Amber Gallows, she's quite sloppy despite being part of one of the biggest factions in the world and she's a champion. Yeah, she's just, like, she's just getting old. That's what I'll just leave it at. Mm, well, let's not waste any time on Women of Honor because I'm just going to leave it as make sure that you get women that can actually work together. Yeah, they need a clean... Like, I like it. I'm going to keep supporting it and I'm going to keep watching them on their YouTube channel. But I want to see better performers. Like, mm. it's just not well, cutting apart. Girl, I ain't got to pay for it, so hey, I'm exactly. going to keep watching it. <laughs> But now we're going to go on to something that a lot of you listeners have been not complaining about, but just want a little bit more of. So Impact Wrestling has been a bit up and down lately because obviously they've had to fire Awesome Kong because of the whole thing with Velvet Sky. No, Remy Sky and her baby backpack. (laughs) So, but that is just something that... Hey, Tom, Mm -hmm. sorry to cut you off. Do we know exactly what happened backstage? Um, I think from what I know, I think there's an altercation where... Remy probably, I think Remy said something and Kong got in her face and then they had to be separated. It was, I heard it was physical. Perhaps. Well, she got sent home about three, four hours before the taping. So So I definitely don't think that Kong would have got let and go for an argument. It had to be an altercation. It had but, to what, be... mm, but what I'm sorry, James, but what, what I will say is that the, uh, the match, I think it was last week, yeah, last week was Jade versus Madison, which was the first... Um, match on the UK tour tapings mm-hmm. but that match was actually supposed to be Kong versus Madison so I do Ooh. give them props for actually fill, filling in the gaps and putting Jade in like two three hours before the taping so I do give them props for that well Jade is a smart choice because she's a seasoned wrestler and she can listen and take moves very well exactly. so. so that was a quick but, fix but. Mm, but obviously from the UK tapings not going to spoil anything but it's basically just the same thing that it's always been for like the past right. I don't know six months now I should know since they came back on Pop TV yeah like it's the people, same thing like the listeners want us to talk about TNA I don't hate on TNA I, I think that they have talented women that are signed under them but the thing is <coughs> These women have been wrestling the same matches, the same people for years now. It's the same match. They need a freshing it up. Like mm. I'm, I'm over the stables. I, I, I'm sick of it. Just like how when WWE had the, all the girls together in stables, and they disband that. It stayed for a couple of months. They let it go. But TNA likes to ride hard on their stables, and it's just like no. Like it's time to break them up and start developing a division where these women can actually work. Like I want to see Marty Bell in her own entity. I want to see. Jade as well doing her own thing. You know what I mean? Like uh, th- this whole mm. Bauhaus thing needs to be scrapped. Now, Do you know what? I will, sorry, James. I will say that like I was a fan of the beautiful people like back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, because they worked. Yeah, but now it's like what eight, ten years later, and it's just stale. Like Angelina's pregnant, so they had to cut her out. Madison and Velvet were a team, and now they're separated. But the Dollhouse, I loved the Dollhouse, but with Taryn, but now she's gone. Yep. They put Kong in, that worked, and now she's gone. It's like, is Rebel the leader? No, thanks. No, like, Rebel can't lead. Like, I like Rebel. Don't get me wrong. I think she, she has a great look. I think she can. She has potential to become a good character in TNA. Rebel can't lead her way around the ring. No, she's not experienced. But um, I like her. I think she has a good look. I think she's a good talker. I think she's very... Um, 
She has great expressions. But um, she's just not going to work as a lead. I'm sorry. Can she be the catty bitchy girl on the side? Hell yeah, she can. But to lead them, no. Can Jade lead the dollhouse? Absolutely not. Because she's more of a badass kick your ass. And Marty, maybe. But I I, I just don't see it from Marty. I see Marty having she won't get over. I see her having success as a single, super, as a single mm. star. Not in a trio. Same well, with Jade. With, yeah. Sorry, carry on. No, that's what, all I was going to say. Oh, okay, but sorry, quickly, with, with TNA, this is what I've been saying. If they want to build a, non, a, a new knockouts division, they want to get indie talent that have, and then put them on cheap contracts, like the, what they've done with Raquel, because yep. obviously her contract's going to be very, very cheap, and then build them up as TNA homegrown talent, not like ex-WWE stars or ex-New Japan, new, that one, New Japan Pro Wrestling, or other companies like homegrown talent on cheap contracts. Yeah, like they just signed that new girl that's coming out with crazy Steve. Oh, she's brilliant. She, like, I like her, but like, why would you put her automatically in a stable with crazy Steve and stuff like that? Like, ha I, they need to bring in women and have women work in the women's division and cut out these. Like, they got Maria. Granted, I love when Maria is at. I love... How they placed her with her husband and the miracle, and they have her as the valet, and she's the mouthpiece. And then she had that that little segment with Gail Kim, which teased uh, Gail Kim and Maria feud, which I would love to see. It's different, it's fresh. I feel like TNA should go that way. And I'm tired of Gail Kim being Captain Save a Ho. She's always running out to save oh, somebody. Oh no. It's like stop it. It's so tiring. And the listeners want us to talk about TNA, but honestly, it's just gonna be a bunch of negativity that we're gonna say. And like, if they stop putting out stuff like how they used to back in the good old days then we would have things to talk about do you know what like I will say like the, the last thing with the knockouts that I actually got me like oh okay it's going to be interesting is when they put Kong with the dollhouse right. but no, clearly that's, that's cool. obviously not going to happen now but like before that the last thing that got me excited about the knockouts division I would honestly say was probably I don't know four or five years ago right <sighs> okay so like Gail Kim is something that is been a captaincy over like the past what ten years in the division that has been going on. Yeah. We need new top women because she's what she's not getting old, but she is getting on in life. And like clearly, she wants to probably leave wrestling soon. Yeah. Like she's she doesn't need the money, you know. She's, they need to build top girls. She's definitely the John Cena of the knockouts division. Like, they just don't build any other top stars. Like they'll come build them up, give them a match with Gail Kim, and then they'll release them. I feel like that's their whole little shtick when it comes to Gail Kim. It's like, let's build some stars up here. Let's let's bring in, like you said earlier, bring in some indie girls. There's so many indie... You know who they need to get? They need to go pick up Thea Trinidad and bring her back into the division because I love that girl. She has a great look. She's a great worker. And that's somebody who they should go put some... Because I know they got some coins. They need to go get her and put some coins in her and bring her back. But like, with WWE recently, well, I'd say in the past year, they're bringing in indie talent and they're bringing also in indie talent for the NXT like squash matches yeah. TNA has got competition with it but saying that TNA to me is just on the down low at the minute anyway but speaking of TNA and talking about contracts and whatnot, TNA recently hired Gabby something Portuguese uh, to TNA and she was called she is actually called Raquel recently last week actually in fact there was a, a news story that broke on TMZ with Raquel saying that in a match, she got her jaw broke, she got her jaw fractured, she got loads of bruises and also an inner tear in something because this girl, I think her name was Alicia, or also Raquel, can't remember. Two girls. She, hmm? It was two girls. Oh, it was called, oh, Alicia and the other one was Raquel as yeah, well. right. They said that they were going to actually tear her from limb to limb. No, and behold, they actually did. So, James, I'm going to go with you first. What do you, make, what do you make of all of this? So, all right. So, Raquel, she picked up a contract with um, TNA, you know, she obviously because of her looks and that she's um, Brazilian. There's never been a Brazilian um, female wrestler that's on television, not that I know of. But um, so she signed up with, I believe it's WXW. And yeah. You, and you could find the video on YouTube. Um, you could also find find the video on our exclusive Twitter account underscore real pipe pump. Oh, cheap plug. Cheap plug, but it's there. Well, anyways, Gabby. Um, it was in Miami. It was last Saturday, and Gabby cut a promo. Um, basically saying that she's gonna go into this ring and she's gonna beat them up, and she called the, she called them. Um, um. Oh my God, what was the word again? 
she just cussed them out in Portuguese, like some bad words. She called them bitches and trash. Be- mm. you know, she, but it's a promo. It's mm-hmm. a promo. So I watched the promo, and the promo was not that serious. But these girls clearly do not like her. And then Gabby also said in the promo, oh, Raquel, um, I made that name more famous in this, that, and the third. Like, I made that name fit. Your name is famous because of me. She said something like that. So when she got into the match, these two girls told, they told, um, there was rumors circling around this match that they were going to go stiff on her. And they were going to really give her a beat and kind of, like, knock her around and show her the roots or something like that mm. and they told Gabby um, Gabby's coach got a hold of that and he found out the information that these girls want to attack her and he let her know about it and she just apparently she decided to continue on with the match which is good you know and she's just trying to show like she she has like a backbone or something but mm. she's like no I'm just gonna go on I'm gonna have this match but when she went in to have this match these girls came in it was so unprofessional they beat her down they punched her in the face with a closed fist they beat her all over her body they fractured her hairline they I think they separated her jaw or something like that yeah they did it's awful I tell ya awful we we have pictures there was pictures of her up I posted it up on the Twitter account but I took it down because I felt like it was so distinct tasteful mm. and i feel so bad for some the unprofessionalism like i hope these two women never work again in this industry because they cannot be trusted if you're gonna really be jealous of this girl coming into the business so young trying to learn she's actually working indie routes working with all these women trying to pick up this craft and she's actually learning very quickly if you guys yeah to look up she's her. not doing a bad job she, i'll give her props i will not shade her because she's doing a damn good job and then for them to get jealous and go and attack her like that in a match it's ridiculous like h- how do you do that to a human being i don't understand do you know what? It's, just, it's like it's really unprofessional and those two girls should know better like if they wanted to quote unquote bring her back to reality they should have just sat her down and just said look let's do this in the match let's do this not you know actually physically do it so if you want to get really technical, though, the name Raquel obviously was was made more famous by Raquel Diaz, but that's completely irrelevant. I was thinking that too, Tom. Well, uh, but also, someone had someone had to say it. Also, cheerleader, fucking Melissa. Do you know what? Come on no. out. No, you know what? You are in the river. She is Bye. right into the river. Splash, splash. For you to be in this, um company for all these years this industry and for somebody with so much um knowledge of the business to sit on twitter and bully and bash someone who was attacked in the middle of a ring that was completely unsafe and for you to sit there and tell her oh and hashtag tmz or whatever she added tmz saying oh look at all these bruises i didn't run to and then she acts tmz bitch you just wanted attention and you got the attention because you're now you're in the the river She's in the well, river. It, it was a picture of her. Sorry, James. It was a picture of um, cheerleader with blood all over her face, and then the next one was Raquel next to her with like bruises. Yeah, no, so that was her. Show, both both photos well, were her. Mm, but on show though, it just bruises, but you never know what's going on underneath. No, the, like, uh, the bruises were um, cheerleader Melissa's bruises. Were they? Yeah. They were all oh. her bruises. It's all her beans. And then she's saying oh. that she's going to... Hold on. Javon, can you please sit down? You're, like, distracting me. So, for well, her... What, sorry, well, whatever it is, Chili and Melissa, if you are listening to this, which you're probably not, but if you are, you are so disrespectful and so unprofessional what you have done to a newbie coming into the business. Like, for women, it's hard as it is trying to come together, but you should be knocking each other down. You should be bringing each other up. Hashtag Stephanie McMahon quote. And, and like Nikki Bella, uh, woman empowerment, and this girl clearly missed that segment. She's a mess, and you, you're you another one that lost total respect from a lot of fans. And then she posted that thinking it's going to be cute, and the backlash her dumb ass got. Everybody shaded her. She caught so much shade for that. Hey, true, she deserves it. She so, to Melissa, you are going straight into the river, yeah. attached to a tree. So, <laughs> goodbye for now. No polls. And probably for a long time. There's no polls, no straw polls, no voting. She's in the river, period. Like you James, just, we just pushed you in. Yeah, she got the sunny treatment, dragged right in. Well, there's, there's like low, and then there's lower. So, sunny's <laughs> lower. I won't go lower than that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Raquel, we send you wishes. Hope you get better soon. 
uh, it, 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 it's such a touchy subject, but mm-hmm. anyway, on to something more lightening. Well, it depends actually on how we say this. Last week on NXT, we had two matches which were quite, well, they were different. We had a heel versus heel match and then a face versus face match. So the heel versus heel match was Alexa Bliss versus <clears throat> Cameron in I would say sort of, it was a good match. It was a good match. There was a video that leaked a, th- a few weeks be- a few weeks before this show and I watched it and it looked sloppy as hell. So WWE NXT producers, I do give them full credit for trying to edit like the sloppy moves out, like that kick, the neck breaker. Cameron, she, it wasn't her best showing. I will say that. But Alexa Bliss, I really, really hope in 2016 she becomes champion because she's just got that... There's just something about her that I really like, whether it's because she's a mean character or not mean character, sorry, because she's a heel character. And yeah, so as for the match for me, it wasn't Cameron's best show in. She needs a lot more training, but she is doing that. And as for Alexa Bliss, another victory. James? I mean, the match was sloppy. Like, I don't I don't know what the hell, I don't know what editing you saw. I thought the match was just sloppy, period. Cameron was just all over the place. Did you watch the live one? No, I, I don't watch the oh, spoilers. Oh, that's, mu- well, the, the live one that someone recorded at the event was way worse than what it actually was. But on TV, I, it, they tried to cover it up. It didn't work. It looked bad. The, 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 the split leg was Cameron's fault. And that's why the crowd turned on her. And that's why when Alexa well, took the, control of the match, the fans loved it. The crowds never liked Cameron. They never liked her. They never, because WWE pushed her to the top quickly. They gave her the Funkadactyls and they threw her on Total Diva. So she lost all respect in regards in that way with the fans. So I can, the t- NXT crowd is a tough crowd to perform in front of. Um, can't, this is what Cameron's, uh, she has a handful of times rest wrestling on TV on NXT not many times so I think I can, it's like it's her fourth one so I can understand the her being nervous in the ring and stuff like that but she's been wrestling for so long for yeah she's been wrestling for like four years now I feel like she shouldn't be making those mistakes um that's just me being honest I do I still like Cameron I think she's a good talent I still think that she's an asset to the to the division, but she needs to focus. And that's the thing. I feel like her head, she gets into her head too much. She went quick, 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 Yeah, quick. she's too run to spots, get to spots, get to spots, and try to hit all her spots. But And then again, she's wrestling with somebody like Alexa Bliss, who Alexa Bliss is, for somebody fairly new, uh, Alexa Bliss is doing really good. And she's one of the girls that just picked two up. Two years. She's that's picked it, up, two years. She's picked up the business so quickly. But... It, she doesn't have that experience to carry somebody like Cameron and no. call matches like 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 someone like Cameron like like someone like Victoria or somebody like um I don't know um Beth Phoenix or um, Natalia can handle somebody like Cameron but Alexa Bliss I don't think so but anyways Alexa Bliss used this moment and capitalized because she outshined the hell out of Cameron even post match when she was like yelling at Cameron after she hit the sparkle splash so I give it to Alexa Bliss Alexa Bliss is on a roll and I do feel like she's gonna capture that NXT Women's Championship before she moves up to the main roster it just has to happen you see like the fans they love the NXT girls that have come from yeah, NXT yeah, like Cameron yeah. like you said she uh, she came in from Tough Enough she admit she you know broke a contract saying that she got signed after she got eliminated from Tough Enough bad move there then she's on Total Divas which has lost a lot of respect from fans because the NXT crowd the majority of them think like well most of them think Total Divas is like the downfall of the Divas division so when she comes to NXT they're going to be like she's not a woman's well she's not a woman's wrestler she is a diva but what I will say, just very quickly, is I love um, Dasha when she ring announces saying the following match is in the women's division. Yeah, I love perfect. That. Love that bit. Yeah, they always do that with NXT. They never call them divas, so I love that. But I think they've been doing it for the past few weeks, where Dash has been saying it's in the women's division match, which just makes it sound more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They great. finally formalized it, and I, I like that. But Cameron versus Alexa, top it all off. Yeah. It, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was just a match. It was nice to see her. I liked her entrance. It was cute. That's it. <laughs> Even anyway. her post interview, I was just like, "Really, Cameron? That's it." I was just like, you know. She knew she didn't do a good job. And then side note, yeah, I could tell that she was, because the fans got into her head. They gave her the you can't wrestle chair and all that nonsense. I'm, I'd but, be like, come on, bring it on, eat it up. Yeah, like, I'd that's rather what, go out there and get a reaction than go out there and like 
tried your hardest to get a reaction and you're getting nothing. I know, it's tough. I feel like, they, and I think the crowd is really getting into her head. And like, even Marie finally found her place with that. But with Cameron, I, I, I love that they had her on the house shows with Team Bad. She was teaming up with Team Bad over the weekend. So I think that's good. She just needs, she needs reps. She needs reps. She hasn't been wrestling. They, they haven't booked her on any shows until recently. They started booking her on the NXT shows, doing those shows here and there on the weekends. But she needs reps. She just yeah. needs to keep getting out there, keep hitting the ropes, and keep training, and she'll be all right. Well, speaking of Eva Marie, the main event of the first time ever in that arena was a women's championship match. God, we've had like so many women matches in the main event of NXT. Oh, yeah, that anyway. was a whole new arena, too. It was like big. Mm. That was awesome. I love that. Incredible. Hold on. So it was... Javon, are you going to stay out there? Because I don't need this back and forth. You guys, the listeners are going to catch me putting these kids together. <laughs> what is it going to James is a super nanny. I was just going to get my phone. Your phone? I don't need this back and forth. If you're going to go sit in the living room, go sit in the living room. If you're going to sit in here, sit in here. What's your <laughs> name? All right. All okay. right. So, sorry, Tom. You know what? That's more than fine, Dad. So... <laughs> Bailey versus Carmella. Now, this is a match that I have been looking forward to ever since I knew that they were like best friends out of the ring. Because clearly, you know what they say, if you're friends outside of the ring and you work in a match, you know each other's limits. And with Bailey and Carmella as best friends outside of the ring, obviously seen on breaking ground, they know what each other's limits are. But this match was not only Carmella's best match, but it was also... It was just a brilliant match all round. Like the fans were into it. They were behind Carmella. They're behind Bailey, obviously. And Carmella's moves in this match, like the head scissors take down from the corner, the um, suicide dive through the middle rope, and then twice, <laughs> for, yeah, and then for the bottom rope. But I love her. I love her facial expressions. Like she's thinking, "Oh, should I do this? Or should I go and see if she's all right?" Now nah, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, but the, the match, story was there. With mm, and the thing is, like the ending, like not a lot of fans are fan. Not a lot of fans are a fan of roll-ups. I'm not one. But this one, like, the series of roll-ups that they did at the end are something you find in the middle of a match. But this, it worked perfectly. You know, Bailey did beat her clean, quote-unquote. She beat her by a roll-up counter. It was a brilliant match. James, what do you think about the match? I agree with you 100%. I thought this was Carmella's best showing, and she needed this match because I really do feel like Carmella's getting... Um... The call up real soon with Enzo and Cass. Well, I think sorry, I think rest. I think the raw after Mania. Yeah, so I think this is kind of like her curtain call. Like this is her peak that she reached on NXT. Like she won the battle royal. She got to face her best friend, and it was a close match. It was her best showing, and she lost by a roll up, which I agree with you. I think it was necessary, and it still made her look like a strong competitor. But Bailey just had to win, and the, like you said earlier, like how her facial expressions, like when she was thinking about doing the suicide dive, or should I go check on her? And she said that hell with it i want to win the title so she went for the second suicide dive mm. which was everything the storytelling was on point carmella delivered um was it the best woman's nxt man uh, no but it was great like i hate when people try to compare them because i saw a whole list well this bailey and sasha was better um sasha and charlotte were better it's like who gives a but that's, damn that's Every, on a different scale that's, exactly. a, that's a live special and i i loved it and I, I i'm so proud of carmella that she got to main event an nxt um show and it was at a big arena and it was for the um, women's championship and it just shows how nxt really cares about their the women in the division and they really look at them as athletes so you see, yeah you see not every woman needs a championship reign but when carmella debuts on raw which i still think is going to be the raw after mania against new day mm-hmm First off, the promos between two teams are going to be amazing, but Carmella is going to get over so well in the women's matches because she's obviously with Enzo and Cass, who are popular already. And I feel like out of all the girls in NXT, Bailey aside, uh, Carmella's the right one to go up out of all the divas. I feel, I feel like she's lined up and she's ready to go. Um, Bailey can go at the drop of a dime, but Bailey's still got work to do on NXT. She's the matriarch down there. She's the one leading the division. So until they're ready to nest that egg on somebody like Anaya Jackson or an Alexa Bliss, then Bailey mm. can move up. Or Asuka. Well, then yeah, Bailey can that's move the up. thing. Like Bailey won't go up until Asuka and Athena are top faces. Well, I don't know about Athena, but I would say either Asuka or Nia. I see those are the two women that could be taking that belt from her. Especially after that post-match running surprise with Eva mm. Marie and Nia Jax. That was everything to me. I loved it. The crowd ate it up. They ate it up. 
and they were just going ham. And when Eva Marie came into that ring, I loved how Eva, Eva Marie was just directing Nia Jax. She's like, yeah, bring her into the ring. Drag her in. Here. They gave Carmella a good beat down. And the heat that Eva Marie received was Vicky Guerrero heat times 10. It was on fire. And I loved how she threw her arms out and just embraced it. And then with Asuka coming out and how she hides behind Nia Jax. And Nia Jax just stares down Asuka. So I can see a number one contenders match coming up. Shortly yeah. for uh, a match with Bailey. Well, post as as terms of the post match, like what I was saying before about, about Athena, Bailey can go up anytime she wants, but she won't go up until Oscar and Athena are known as the top faces of the division. Because obviously, gonna... when Bailey goes up, it's only think Carmella. So. I'm, I well, when well, well, sorry, when Carmella goes up and Bailey goes up, there's no baby face left apart from Oscar. I mean. It is just mm. Asuka, but, like, they got too many damn heels in NXT. They have too many. They got Dana Brooks. They got Emma. They got Billy Kay. They got Peyton Royce. They got Nia Jax and Eva Marie. Well, who would you turn? Um, the Austri- I would Peyton. I don't know. I just like Peyton as a heel and Billy Kay. Maybe Billy Kay. Cause I I'd, really... put, I'd put Billy Kay as a face. Yeah, I think Billy Kay might go face, but... Or they can bring up that Gianna girl and get her together with a new character and, and mm. put her No, she needs a lot more work. Still. She does need a lot of work, but she's the one who's had the most showings out of all or maybe Dana Brooks can come back and Dana Brooks and Emma could get into a program where one of them will break off after the baby phase. We see yeah, but in terms of Bailey, I don't think she's gonna go up until I'd Summer's say, established. Po- Summer's Summer, yeah, probably not even till twenty seventeen. I like I I Athena no Athena still has to build herself up to even be established and I I definitely don't think Bailey will be there until 2017. Bailey will be called up this year, 2016. She, mm. she, she will be. She will be. Yeah. Well, they just need to just re- they just need to establish. Well, they they do a great job as it is, but they just need to establish new faces at the minute. I think that's what yeah. they I think that's what they're working on. I feel like they, they understand that they have too many heel divas. Because when Bailey goes up, Oscar gets a good reception as it is. Not as good as Bailey, is it? But she still gets a great reception. So, but you know what, Tom? They don't have to be heels. They, they, there's no. They, well, you know what I noticed with NXT? There's no such thing as heels. Because remember, Charlotte. Charlotte was a quote heel, um, but the fans just respected her through her work. So I think that's how NXT is going to see it as is whoever the fans yeah. decide to respect. Mm, but there are some that are classed as a heel, like. Dana and Emma. They are heels. I guess that's how... Because we're so accustomed to picking up baby faces and heels, good guys and bad guys. But I really feel like NXT is trying to break that mold. Yeah. Okay, then. Perfect. Sorry, perfect example. Sasha Banks at the minute. Like, we'll get exactly. on to her in a bit. Yeah. But Sasha Banks is currently, quote-unquote, a baby face as in the storyline, but she's actually a heel. Exactly, because the fans respect her. But she's, the- she hasn't changed her character at all. She's still no. like, even on Monday Night Raw, what we'll talk about later, she, I didn't see any character change from Sasha. She's no, the she, Beyonce. Oh, she, she called herself the Beyonce, and she's the one who left the group. They didn't kick her out. She left. Well, Sasha Banks is Beyonce. Kelly Rowland is Naomi. And Tamina is Michelle Williams. So <laughs> Don't come uh, for Tina. Oh, <laughs> I, I, Tina. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tamina. I love Tamina. <laughs> Good old Tina. But yeah, that was NXT. NXT <clears throat> was amazing. Yeah. Um, well, quickly, just brushing over last week's SmackDown, it was Naomi and Sasha. Now, this is the match that I've been waiting for for, you know, the past year since the NXT call-ups. And <clears throat> this match was fantastic. Like, yes. Na- Naomi's kicks, the crowd loved it. It was mm-hmm. amazing. It was a great match. Loved it, loved it. And Sasha's boot to Tamina. <sighs> my God. That spot was the spot of the year. Like, I loved it. When she threw her on the chair, Tamina tried to get up and she kicked her right <laughs> Like, get out of my club. Like a boss. Like, Sasha Banks is just a shit, period. Like, no, nobody can touch her. You can't touch no. Sasha Banks. She's too on fire. She's too hot. She's too hot to touch. She's too hot. Hot damn. And Becky Lynch got knocked out. I, I love how Becky Lynch just got knocked out by Tamina. I always wanted that side feud between Naomi, I mean, um, Becky Lynch and Tamina. And I'm glad that I've been getting a little bit of it. Like, well, went to their match yeah. on Raw last week, and with Tamina going up against her, um, 
on SmackDown um, at the announce tables. But this on. this tag match, like we'll get onto it. But <clears throat> the tag match, I'm looking way more forward to than the championship match. Really? Well, actually, no. When you think about it, I'm probably not. But anyway, I'm excited for both. They, the build up <laughs> for both matches has been tense. If you got something to complain about, you're just a complainer. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else they can give you. There's been story for both of these programs. So if you're complaining, girl, bye. You need to go see somebody. You need to see a therapist. You need to figure out what's really what's going on in your head because they've been giving us stories. So what's there to complain about? All right. Well, speaking of all of this, on Raw, we had not one, not two, but three women segments, which is just, it, it's, it's incredible. And like the Charlotte, we'll go first. Charlotte and Brie, like I don't, to, to start with this feud, this little mini feud. I like these feuds where they have like a feat, a, a challenger, or just an opponent pin the champion, and then they're in the title picture, and they have a mini feud. And this has gone from this into obviously something bigger now because Daniel Bryan has retired, and they've cashed in on that. And as Eric, Eric, um, Eric Bischoff used to say, controversy controversy creates cash and obviously WWE have cashed in on Daniel Bryan's retirement for Brie try to get a few pops behind her it's worked but the segment in all I liked it you know it Charlotte Charlotte on the mic I like it but she was much better in NXT but obviously on Raw it's in bigger arenas so you have to be a bit louder what but were we watching the same show we're probably not Charlotte Slade that no, segment. no, not what she said. I'm just saying in NXT she was a lot better, but because they're in a bigger arena, you I don't have understand to be louder. what you're trying to say. She hmm? was loud enough for me. I heard her loud and clear. She got no, her message. Across. I'm saying in NXT it's it's in a little room so you can be nice and quiet. But in an arena you have to be louder. So you and she just like comes she, up and is loud. She seen that she was monotoned or no, she's just like loud. She's like, oh my God, bring your baby. I love it because she's like, she's talking her down. Like she's being like so like sarcastic with her deliverance. Like she's just like, I am this, that, and the third. And you're that, that, and this, that, and one. I guess. But, but I, Charlotte, if Ric Flair wasn't there, Charlotte Rick, won't get the heat that she's getting. I think she would. Not as much. I think she would. Rick, I think she wouldn't. Rick Flair is Rick Flair is currently her like so, training wheels. No, and, and no, 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 no. All right, here slightly, we go. And yeah. then Charlotte will here obviously go. go off on her own. This bitch did everything she did on her own in NXT without her dad beside her. The fans respected her. She made a name for herself. Yeah, uh, having Ric Flair on the side of her is going to cause uh, more eyes on her. More people who really don't care about women's wrestling will pay a little more attention because, hey, that's Ric Flair. But Charlotte generates that woo because she's a flair. There's nothing she can do. There's nothing this woman can do that will not relate her to her father. You know why? Because that's her freaking father. People need to get over that. That's her dad. There's no changing. There's no coming back for that. And shout out to Summer Rae for putting that troll fan together that was coming at her trying to say that she looks like a man. That is a woman. Like, stop it with the hate. I'm over it. People hate on Charlotte because she's a heel now. Now they want to call her a man. Now you want to sit here and say that her promo was like, eh, it was alright. A... That fans, promo was I'm, great. Some fans are just so fickle. Like, I know I said that she talks too loud. But to me, that's just what it is. Like, she's good at what she's doing and she's good at how she's being sarcastic and all that. But Tom, but... think about it. You say Dana Brooks can't talk. Brie Bella, you complain about Dana Brooks. You said this, down the third about Dana. Hold on, like, she Brie looks Bella... at the ceiling too much. I think that's what you said. And then you said uh, Brie Bella true. is I'm monotone. Just... She's just down the third. Now, but Charlotte she is. speaks Brie too Bella loud. Is monotone. Who's the best speaker? Sasha, is that your favorite speaker? Is... Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. Yeah. That's it? Sasha, let's see who else. Naomi's been improving. Nikki was Wait a improving. Naomi is better than Charlotte, you think? No, I'm just going for the list of who I think can actually talk on the mic. Um, yeah, so there's them. And then you've got like some generic ones. Um, All right. But yeah, the, there's more women in the division that can talk on the mic than there are none. Like, Brie Bella is very fragment on the mic. She doesn't, that's not where she shines. And I've always said that. And on Monday night, she did good. She did all right. Did she shine on the mic? No. Did I want more from Brie? Yeah, but okay, I know okay, what to expect. Okay, when has she ever Brie. shined on the mic? That's what I'm saying. I know what to expect from Brie. Right. I know exactly what to expect from Brie. Was I 
was I not entertained? No, I was very entertained. I thought Brie, I thought Brie did good. I thought she held her own. Um, but yeah, she could work on her mic. But I'm so tired of bashing her on her mic skills. It's never gonna change. That's just how she talks. So I'm kind of like over it at that at this point. But with Charlotte, when she came out, Charlotte carried that promo. So for people to sit here and try to throw shade at Charlotte about it, I think that's ridiculous. Like Charlotte no, came over, she I'm, made I'm, that I'm, promo. I'm saying between Charlotte and Brie, Charlotte clearly carried that promo. She even was, like, waiting for Brie to come and, like, attack. Like, she took the smack, and then she was like, all right, Brie, come and spam me. Take me down. And then Brie came, and, like, you know, Brie had a little bit of the, a delay reaction. But, like, I, I would never nitpick Charlotte at all because that girl came, and she freaking slayed. I love how Charlotte has been booked since she's captured that Divas Championship. It's been personal storyline after personal storyline after personal heat. It's all these great storylines that's been coming. She's the best woman that's ha held that championship. That's even going far as far back as Michelle McCool. There's never been a more relevant Divas Champion than Charlotte freaking flair and for um, people to say who name it aj aj just held that belt and had no hold title on. match had no matches a aj no thanks i would say lay cool when they held it together see that, that that took two people i'm talking about one woman holding a belt like I'm, i will agree with you lay cool was very entertaining and i love them i'm talking about one woman, and they needed two women to do that one woman holding that belt to be relevant it wasn't May Reese. May Reese didn't even have a match. That's why she had that belt for so damn long. <laughs> Eve Torres sparked when she became a heel. That was it. And then she had no storylines when it came to her matches, besides her whole Caitlyn and Layla feud. The you see, even Natalia's was just, it wasn't a good reign. So it now you're great. saying it, and now I'm thinking about it. It's Charlotte's Charlotte. reign has been good month after month after defense after defense. That's what I'm saying. Like, people need to look look at the progression that this um, this division, the, I can't even speak, division has been going because I've always said this, when, N when Charlotte was in NXT, I said, when this girl gets up to the main roster, it's going to be different because there's no way that they can book Charlotte um, like how they booked the Divas on the current roster. I said, she's too talented. She's too talented. She's a flair. And then she built herself down on NXT. She gets up to the main roster. Now everybody's like, oh, it's because they put her with her dad. I'm like, oh, shut up. Well, she hold on. I didn't say because she was, she's was. she been paired with her dad. I'm just saying that now Rick's with her. It's helping her. Oh, but obviously, course. he is bringing some heat towards her. Of course. And, like, we should be happy that Ric Flair is working with a diva. We have a big superstar, a two-time Hall of Fame um, inductee, working in the women's division, putting over the divas, trying to get the divas division to the level that we know it should be on. So for people to sit here and say, oh, it's all because of Ric Flair, you better fucking... Pray to God and thank him every day. If you love the Divas division, the women's division in wrestling, that Ric Flair is working with Charlotte, and Charlotte's coming out with her dad every week, and he's her legit manager. It's not no Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar thing where you see them every other week, every two weeks. No, he's there every night working, trying to get this women's division somewhere. So for people to give that Ric Flair shit, like, I'm over it. Like, goodbye. Goodbye. I don't want to hear it. Bye, 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 bye. That's all I got to say about Charlotte. Bye. Anyway, so for the fast lane match, it's obviously is going to be Brie versus Charlotte. Now we'll talk. We'll go on to that towards the end because there's a big announcement. But early from today. But what I will say is that I just hope Charlotte retains because if she doesn't and Brie wins, then we say goodbye to the three way or even Charlotte and Sasha at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, actually, after this, a few matches later, we had. Well, coming back from the commercial advert breaks, we heard a thing that we've not heard for a while. It was Summer Rae. She was in the ring and she was facing Paige. Now, when I saw Paige, I thought, okay, this is going to be like a little squash match and Paige is going to win because the whole Total Divas and promotion of it. But no, Summer Rae has won her first match on Raw in almost two years. Yeah, her last match she won on Raw was like 2014, I believe. It was March 31st. Oh my God. That was almost, I know. A year, was almost two years ago, really. And that was like, I think it was the whole Summer Emma, or Summer, yeah, Summer versus Emma. It was all of that fiasco going on. That's crazy. It was just, it was it was a nice simple match. Summer's obviously Summer has been working the tours like she just came off the one with Germany okay. with Charlotte and Paige and someone else, uh, Lana. So she's been having matches there and obviously tours before. She's shown no ring rust. The deep arm drags were flawless. The spin kick amazing. You know she she hasn't missed a beat, and I'm glad she's back. Will she get a push from this? I don't know because I fully expected Paige to win. What do you, you think? Know? 
I'm glad that they paired her with Paige. I'm glad that they let her go over with Paige. You know, they're good friends. Like you said earlier, good friends always work well together. But they did work They did work well together. They started. She was the first girl that Summer ever worked with in WWE was Paige. So um, when it comes to Summer Rae, I don't get so excited when they pop off something with Summer Rae because it always falls flat. And it's been one storyline after the other storyline. They always <coughs> drop the ball when it comes to Summer Rae. And it's a bit disappointing. Um, but with Summer Rae, I feel like the win was justified. Like, I feel like she deserved that win. She needed something to get it going. And she really sparked. And she showed us love on Twitter. Shout out, Summer Rae. We love you. Hi. But um, I feel like Summer should have came in with a new look, new gear. I, I'm over the gear, Summer. Or at least new colours of the gear. I love the gear, but at least new colours. I think it was a whole... I think she redid the gear. Like, they had different rhinestone here, different design here, different leggings. But I'm mm. ready. I'm ready for a whole complete wardrobe change if this is going to carry on. But is she going to change it? Probably not. She's been in the same outfit since she debuted, so... <laughs> and you know me. I never complain about Diva's outfits. I never do. But Summer Rae is just the one that I'm just so sick of looking at. What I do if it's like too, too awful. It's not like it's not like her gear is ugly. It's just no. like I want to. She just worn. She just worn that same color pretty much every match. Yeah, it's always the pink and gold, pink and gold. Like it looks great on her and her skin tone. But I'm ready for something different. And you know what? I'm just I'm just excited to see where this goes. Maybe it's a side feud with her and Paige. Why not? You know? I think it could be for the next few weeks. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a rematch on SmackDown and Summer beats her again. Yeah, like, why not? Like, have her keep getting these fluke wins on Paige. Have Paige get frustrated. You know, build something. Because these two can't work great together. Summer is fire on the mic. Like, mm. when I was talking about the women that you... Like, what women do you think are good? I thought you were going to name Summer and Lana um, quickly after Sasha, but you didn't. I, found that I, completely, I completely forgot. Yeah, but these two, they're like... Summer's great. Paige is great, and I'm glad that they're working together. So I'm glad mm. Summer got something going. Well, just quickly, like, Paige versus Summer, that was the feud that didn't actually start in NXT. Wait, it started, but never finished. And that was the feud that I wanted to go for the Women's Championship at the first takeover. But clearly, it didn't happen. Like, it was, like, typical Barbie mean girl diva versus the anti black haired black makeup diva like total opposites. Yeah. It started, yeah, but clearly it didn't happen. No, because Summer quickly got the Fandango mm. collar. Mm. Yes. That's what happened. So, with that, we are on our penultimate, which was Becky and Naomi. Actually, it was the final Diva segment of the night. Becky versus Naomi, first time ever for these two. Another flawless match. Can we talk about the pre-match? I loved when um, Becky Lynch was rolling up into the building in her car, and then she gets run in by Team Bad. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Tamina super kicked her with her yeah. 1099 sneakers. I loved it. And then Naomi leans over her, and she's like, I'll see you later. Becky. <laughs> I love it in her show. You see, I show. predicted this. You know what, actually? I predicted the whole night for the Divas, actually. I said Summer Rae would come back in a match. I said it would be Becky versus Naomi. And I said Brie and Charlotte would have an in-ring talking segment. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you so did. clearly, I need my coins, girl. <laughs> jingle, jingle. Yeah, you so, did. So, yeah. I remember. Yeah, that's funny. You did mention. No, you said you didn't want them on Miss TV. And you didn't get that. So, you were on no. point. No. Well, like, actually, no, no, no. I said them to have a talking segment, but just not without yeah, Miss, but without yeah, Miss TV. Yeah, that's what. That, yeah, you said, and that's exactly what happened. It wasn't Miss. So it was well, clearly, I'm a Look, mind reader. I, honestly, I wouldn't. I would prefer it was on Miss TV. To be honest with you, <laughs> I really would because I thought like Byron Saxon was so fucking random. I was just like, oh, sorry, Javon. I was just like, James oh. Children. In the room. <laughs> I was just like, where the hell? Is Miz, but and then Miz had a match with um, AJ Styles, so that made sense to me. So I was just like, whatever. Uh, uh, anyway. Anyways, the match on Becky. Point. Yeah, what you think? I thought it was a fun match. Honestly, I thought it was awesome. I loved um the post match beatdown when Sasha Banks came out and she was taking off her <laughs> earrings. <laughs> she walked so slow to that ring. She's like, mm. but see, that's what I was talking about. How she, she's still a heel. She hasn't broke out of character. Like she didn't run to the ring to save her. She walked. She was just like taking off her earrings. She was just like, I'm not about to run for Becky freaking Lynch. She took off her earrings. She threw it down. She just intimidated them and she let Tamina Samoa. Um, drop Becky Lynch before she got into the ring. So Do you know what? Yeah, Sasha, Sorry, Banks carry on. St Sasha Banks is still doing her thing, and she's still doing what WWE. Is. She's still fitting fitting in that role WWE wants her to be, as she's still being true to herself as a character. So I love it. I love the Sasha Banks booking. Do you know what I would love to see on SmackDown this week? What 
Do you, do you know the whole Trish and Lita backstage cat fight before WrestleMania? How, how can I forget? That's iconic. I know. I would love to see, like, uh, Sasha standing there doing a makeup or looking in the mirror or something, saying how boss fight she is. Becky comes up and says, oh, hey, what happened on Monday Night Raw? You know, you walk so slow to the ring and they both throw shade at each other and then they just get into a full-on fist fight. And that's actually what I could see happen because there is dissension between them. Before the match? Or before the match? That could be be an easy pre-show, like, banger right there. Put it in the mm. pre-show. Get everybody excited for the match. That should be something that they should do. I love that idea, Tom. Yeah, oh, you see, because it's just, it's some, because they're not actually like saying, "Oh, there's two women who just can't stand these other two women, so let's join." Ooh. Becky's mentality. I said this in the chat. Becky's Andy. mentality is that she likes to help people when they're in trouble. Sasha, because obviously she, Team Bad, Naomi and Tamina. You know what's um, funny? <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, but like for them to have that fight, right? Mm-hmm. Picture this. They're getting breaking up by security or whatever. And then you see Charlotte walk by in the background and she just looks at them with that disgust look in her face and she just shakes her head and walks away. Just to give <gasps> us that, let that thought like Charlotte's still lurking around. And then Ric Flair pops in and just goes, Whoa! You know? Like, I, I think that would be everything. And then, and then as the camera comes back from them, you see Becky and, Sh- uh, Becky and Sasha still trying to fight the security of breaking them off. Mm-hmm. <gasps> it would be everything. Yes. That because would be, then we'll know that. It'll be both- them for Mania. Three mm. of them. Yes. You know what? I can actually see that happening. Or I can see that happening the raw after. Or Mania. maybe Becky and Sasha can lose the match and have that happen after. Oh, yes. Or the, when and, it, where, and, and Charlotte would have won her match against Brie. And then she could walk by and be like, huh, I won my match. These two can't even get it together. And you know what I mean? And then it could go on like that. Maybe mon- on Monday Night Raw, we could have that segment. So would you have Brie versus Charlotte first at Fastlane? Um, no. And then the tag match, or would you have the tag match first? Because I'd rather have the tag match first. I'd rather have the tag match first as well. Yeah, because then you can have them back. Uh, you know, obviously when the match is ended, and then the next match after that happens, and it's a backstage segment with Sasha and Becky arguing. Then they have a fight, and then Charlotte and Rick walk by and yeah. says, hmm, "I'm going to retain my championship. Looks like I'm going to win, and you two haven't." Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I cannot wait for Fastlane. I know, it's the Sunday. Are you excited? Mm. Are you going to watch Fastlane, Javon? Are you excited? He's like, what is that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's a show about cars and whatnot. <laughs> it is? No. <laughs> no. It's a pay-per-view. It's a wrestling pay-per-view before. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here. Steve. Go. All right, go on. Oh, what did you do? Oh, no, I was just giving him the phone. Any, if, well, I can't hear anything. What have you done, James? What have you done? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I was just giving him the phone. Uh, my brother was calling, so I was like, yeah, take the phone. Go talk to him. Yeah, take, the room, <laughs> take the phone. Run away. Um, yeah, so we're on to the final bit of the evening. Of the evening. It's like we're a talk show. Um, of the whole show. It is earlier today on a interview with God Morning America, which, you know, big is that's big. Brie Bella was being interviewed with her husband, Daniel Bryan, a lot for Good Morning America, and Brie Bella quoted, I am going to hang my boots up and retire this year. Oops, sorry, FaceTime. <laughs> Go ah. on. <laughs> Is it anyone nice? Oh my God, what the fuck? Hey. I denied it. It's the... Hey. All right, go on. Sexy crawl on the prowl. Anyway, um, yeah, so Brie Bella is officially retiring from WWE this summer, or as she quoted, sooner than you think. So, James, what do you think? I mean, we've all seen this coming. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked at all, and I think it's good timing for Brie. Brie's put in almost 10 years in this company. She's risen up to the top. She has total divas. She actually did help the divas get into the position that they are now. Um, I'm not going to shade her. She's, she's given a lot back to the company, um, and I want to see her go out respectfully respectfully you know what i mean like give her the match give her the match yeah. don't let her win like she's gonna i don't think brie's gonna win honestly i think brie's gonna oh, pass the torch because oh. if nikki bella lost to charlotte brie's been losing match after match after match before this whole little little um thing happened mm. i don't think i don't think at all that brie's gonna walk away champion but, 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 sorry, James, but what if they do give her the championship and then she retires with it 
Like, would they put a tournament into WrestleMania? No, that would be stupid. So, exactly. So the, I don't think they're going to give it the Trish Stratus treatment, oh, to I be honest. Oh, uh, my God. But I think, uh, th- does she deserve a great send-off? Absolutely, she deserves it. She was in the biggest diva feud in the modern era with Stephanie McMahon. So she definitely deserves something. But yeah. to, to leave as champion, not so much. No, because there's many women before. There's many women that deserve to have that happen before her. But what I probably would like to happen is if, if she is going to retire at uh, Fastlane post match, she could get on the mic and say, you know, blah blah blah. This is it. I'm hanging up my boots from now. But would she do that before WrestleMania? No. I don't know. I think it would be such a waste of Charlotte. To just give the belt to Brie because of all of this. No, 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 no. I'm saying if Charlotte beats Brie at Fastlane and then post match, Brie gets on the mic and then officially retires. Yeah, and that, then would leaves. Be, that would be a great way to go. It'd be a great way to go. She's going to say that she has, she's leaving the division on, or have Charlotte take her out. Just like how she took out Nikki Bella. Go mm-hmm. out K Fame, you know? Get beat up. Because think about it. I feel like Brie Bella is, is a good team player. I feel like she's going to give back to the business because these girls generally do love the An business. ambassador. They That's love the business. Be. And I feel like she will do the job for Charlotte because Charlotte is like, it's not like she's losing to Ashley Mazzaro. You're losing to Charlotte Flair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think I honestly think that Brie Bella would be okay with that. She really would, because Charlotte's freaking the shit. So I th- yeah, I think Brie's just ready to start a family. But yes. you know what? Side note, quickly, Total Divas. This is what I love about the show, Total Divas. Um, you know, like keeping up with the Car- keeping up with the Kardashians. You know, it's the most yeah. well known show on the E Network and all that. It's not based around things that happen in like in their business. It's just mostly script, well, nearly all scripted and all that. But with Total Divas. They have to base it around WWE. So with Nikki being injured, that's a storyline in Total Divas. With Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella retiring, that's going to be a storyline in Total Divas. So it's it's not all it's not all scripted and all fake because some of it's real, which is good. Yeah, that's what and, I love about it. And I honestly, if Total Divas continues on, I don't even know if they picked up if they got picked up for another season yet. But I don't think they did. <laughs> if they did or if they do, <clears throat> I can see Brie Bella and Daniel both being on it. Even though that they're not active superstars on the roster, but they're still no. they're still a part of WWE. They're still a part of the WWE family, even though they're not talent anymore. Because I'm sure they'll still go do signings and WrestleMania stuff and all of that. So and I I heard that they still want a place for Daniel in WWE. So I could see Daniel, um, maybe training, going down to NXT, filling in that void that Dusty Rhodes left. Mm. Yes, because or, Dusty Rhodes didn't actually get in the ring, did he? He no, just gave wisdom. Wisdom. Or, mm. if he doesn't want to teach, but I, well, I know it's only WWE that, that hasn't cleared Daniel Bryan, and the WWE doctors, but I know multiple other doctors have cleared him to wrestle. So who knows, maybe two years from now we could see him pop up back on ROH or something. So. Probably. Who knows? But in, in, yeah, but in like terms of Brie... No one, everyone saw this come in. Hopefully she doesn't win at Fastlane because if she does, it's not It's not going to be an absolute fuck-up for WrestleMania. But it's obviously going to change the landscape of what <clears throat> we thought was is going to happen, which hopefully it does. Hold on. Hold on, Tom. While James is gone, I'm going to sing my song, yeah. See, I'm being Jillian Hall at the minute. It's absolutely incredible. You know you want me. You can take your eyes away from me. I'm the hottest thing since last break. My nephew's not looking at the computer like, what the hell is that? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a so like Jillian show. <laughs> Eve, come here. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello! <laughs> Look at them running away. <laughs> Was that our last topic? Uh, yeah, mate, I'm not as scary as, as I look, thank you. But okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that is our last topic. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is another show of the Pipe Bomb podcast wrapped up in a nice, pretty little post Valentine's show. Clearly, you don't want to be in our chat right now because it is R rated. <laughs> so, thanks for joining today. You can follow me on Twitter at what it is now oh yeah at underscore knocks you out that's k-n-o-x if you can spell it's you out um james where can the following i'm surprised you remembered it you change your tagline like so many times well i'm jesus so you know twitter handler 
Um, you guys can follow me at Jimmy James J A Y M E S, and make sure to subscribe and go check out the Hanaya the Howling Huntress interview and be on the lookout for our new one that we just landed. We'll be dropping the trailer soon. And you can follow the Pipe Bomb podcast on Twitter at underscore Real Pipe Bomb. You know how to spell that. We don't need to tell you. From yep. myself and James, a good night and good day and keep on blessed. Jesus hashtag. Toodaloo. Say bye, guys. Bye. Ah, bye. <laughs> bye, Tommy. Bye.